We're following two big stories in a city in crisis as the crime crisis rages on in Baltimore. Another example of brazen youth crime in Baltimore is police report a police report reveals children tried to rob a Barks employee at gunpoint, forcing the animal shelter to actually close down today. Plus, an organization trying to reduce violence apparently isn't getting support from the city. And that's why Safe Streets, a program with questionable success, continues to be funded. Keith Daniels will join us live with a closer look at rising juvenile crime in just a few minutes. Our live team coverage begins with Riel Creighton and the concerns from the FACE organization. Well, Mary and Kai, they say they struggle to survive and rely almost entirely on donations. And that is despite, they say, the long list of honors and accolades that they have received from the city. Tonight, reeling as their only hope of city-funded financial support has just slipped away. Life skills to provide counseling, therapy, things that they stand in need of. It's what Marlo Hargrove says his organization offers. But helping them helping them to rehabilitate themselves. Face, freedom advocates celebrating ex-offenders. To him, one major tool in Baltimore's crime fight, targeting directly what's driving so much of it, repeat offenders. I gave me courage. Coming home from incarceration and looking to change their lives for the better. Back in April, Fox 45 News went inside the program's East Baltimore Transitional House, a first stop for those just out of lockup. Assistance for the formerly incarcerated Hargrove believes keeps them from going back. And a contribution even the city, he said, also seemed to recognize. Mind you, they've reached out to us to the FACE organization. Invited to apply for funding via the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, or MONSI. So they did. Injustice being done. And, and got their response. Stating that uh, we didn't meet the criteria, but thank us for the successful work that we're doing and the possibility of collaborating in the near future. Rejection. Hargrove says after 20 years of turning lives around, but no financial support. As money goes to organizations like Safe Streets, who the mayor now says will undergo a reorganization. They say they want change. Hargrove doesn't question Safe Streets' effectiveness. Calling Sansi. But instead, he says why the city doesn't see theirs. Doing the same old thing, giving to the same old folks, but expecting different results. Now, just to be clear, they did not accuse Monzi or the city of doing anything wrong, but they are deeply frustrated over, they say, the role that they play in violence reduction isn't being, like many other organizations, similarly awarded. Reporting live in Baltimore tonight, Riel Creighton, Fox 45 News. Riel, thank you. Well, meanwhile, Baltimore continues to see an uptick in juvenile crime. The latest incident happened last night at the Barks Animal Shelter. It comes just days after police say three teenagers led police on a high-speed chase from Baltimore City into the county. Police say they found three loaded guns, ammunition, and marijuana in that car. Now, the city has seen juveniles commit a number of violent crimes this year, including carjackings and murders. One of the most high profile cases that 15 year old squeegee kid accused now of shooting and killing Timothy Reynolds. Keith Daniels has been investigating today's incident. He joins us live now with a closer look at what happened. Keith. Well, Mary, the people at Barks calling it a stunning incident. Employees shaken by what happened. And tonight, the search for the accused young offenders. At the Barks Animal Shelter in Cherry Hill, George and Sydney arrived Wednesday afternoon. They really like uh, friendly attention. With a pair of guinea pigs. We actually got them from a friend. I was going to foster them and like find a home for them, but I couldn't, <laughs> so I just had to take them somewhere. She wanted to leave them at Barks, but the couple and pets stopped at the gate. Barks closed after an attempted armed robbery of an employee. According to a police report obtained by Fox 45 News, the suspects are juveniles, believed to be anywhere from 11 to 14 years old. One of them accused of pointing a handgun at the victim. Seriously? A gun? Honestly, I feel like it is a problem that goes pretty deep. Police said it happened Tuesday evening at about 6.15. 
According to the report, the employee was leaving work, driving toward the shelter's gates when the suspects approached her vehicle, one on the passenger side, the other on the driver's side. They asked her for money. Then police say she saw one of the suspects holding a gun, pointing it at her. That's when she sped away. Now the search for the suspected juvenile offenders. The latest incident, part of a troubling trend. Juveniles named as suspects in the crime, some violent, happening in Baltimore. A state delegate and former prosecutor in the juvenile detention center on record with a disturbing observation. We had juveniles that would start off with a minor crime and once they're in the system, they come back for something else that's even worse and worse. And then unfortunately, many of these juveniles end up becoming adults and committing crimes as well. Experts agree it comes down to consequences. Juvenile offenders, many of them repeat offenders, committing crimes without fear of ramification. At least the experts say, in Baltimore. Really the focus in the leadership of the city and, and really in the leadership of the state and the General Assembly has been sort of some of the softer approaches uh, that are consistent with, again, juvenile delinquency. Well, Bark says it will reopen tomorrow for regular operations with increased security measures. Well, live tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Well, we want to hear from you. Is crime getting better or worse in your neighborhood? 95% of voters right now say worse. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in.